When news broke in May 1933 that Nazis had staged book burnings across Germany, the American response was swift and angry. Nearly 200,000 people streamed onto the streets of cities across the country in protest. Authors, some of whose books had been burned, condemned the censorship. President Franklin D. Roosevelt adopted the imagery of the smoldering pyres in his speeches, such as when he said, if the fires of freedom and civil liberties burn low in other lands, they must be made brighter in our own. Today, the better part of a century later, book burnings remain one of the most recognizable images of the Nazi era. This is perhaps because of the influence they had at the time. For many Americans, they encapsulated the German regime. They served as a portent for what was to come. And yet, as Andrew Pettigree tells us in The Book at War, how reading shaped conflict and conflict shaped reading, his sprawling new cultural history, less than 20 years earlier, during spells of wartime chauvinism, Americans themselves had zealously burned German books, and librarians were happy to lead the way. In The Book at War, Pedigree, a professor of modern history at Scotland's University of St Andrews, explores how printed media has shaped people in relation to conflict. Books and war, he argues, are closely intertwined. Books have conditioned readers to expect and subsequently support war. They have been vectors of ideology and plunder for victors. Yet they have also represented great solace and solidarity in times of combat, for civilians taking cover and for soldiers on the front lines. In cogent and steady prose, Pedigree recounts an array of historical moments, among them the pivotal role Percy Fitzgerald's The Transvaal from Within played in marshalling British support for a fight against the Boers in South Africa, and how newspapers for boys in 19th century Britain inculcated in their youthful readers a readiness to take arms. Similarly, he writes of Prussian general Friedrich von Bernhardi's Germany and the Next War, published in 1911 to wide acclaim, which argued in favor of war, for the sake of our position as a world power. Later, Books about Nazi Germany and the Blitz prepared Americans for enthusiastic entry to the Second World War. Pedigree demonstrates that, as with all culture, books can be seized to do either good or harm, stiffening resistance and emboldening patriotism as surely as they can expand minds. Pedigree clearly possesses an exceptional breadth of knowledge, in addition to a skill for nuanced narrative and convincing arguments. His accounts are often fascinating, such as his description of how modern spycraft relied on librarians, books and academics. He tells us of banned books entering Germany in the backpacks of Allied soldiers, and of pudgy, and insubordinate, Evelyn Waugh petitioning his commanding officers for leave to write what would become Brideshead Revisited.